What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson here. We're back with the latest episode of the Level Up Podcast. We've got Greg Harrelson here along with a great guest. We're going to be talking about how Kevin Mills went from new agent, a brand new licensed agent, to 180 deals this year in three years. So this is an amazing trajectory, an amazing story, and we're going to talk about how he's essentially built an extremely highly profitable business with about one point of failure, uh, which is essentially the best way to build a business that can uh, be sustainable through any market condition. We'll talk about why that is. So first of all, let's bring in Greg Harrelson. What is up, man? How are you? Whew, lots of things. We got through the storm, so thank goodness anybody on mm -hmm. the East Coast or even anywhere in the Gulf, you know, we escaped a, a pretty big one, at least I did in South Carolina. And, and uh, anybody that's out there in those Houston and those areas that got hit, you know, we're, we're thinking about you. But um, I'm ready to just continue to, to uh, hammer out the business, do some deals, talk with Kevin, and, and uh, hang out with you, Matt. <laughs> All right. Well, let's bring in Kevin. Kevin Mills, how are you? Doing well. Doing well. Excited to be here. Honored to be yeah. a guest. Glad to have a good conversation with you guys. Yeah. So you and I, uh, we were introduced about a year ago, and I think we had you lined up at one point to come on Real Estate Uncensored, and that fell through or something. And so we're we're back to bring you on level up because at the time, I don't think when you and I were first introduced, I don't think Greg Harrelson was even running the level up podcast, but now he is. And so we can actually put you guys together on the same call, uh, which is kind of the, the best way to do it since Harrelson introduced me to you anyway. So let people know kind of where you're at, when you got in the business, and uh, then before we talk about kind of what the business looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So I got into the business and I graduated in 2013. I sold cars for about six, seven months right out of right out of graduating school. I went into that. That was the first business that was hiring immediately um, and, and had hardly any qualifications. I needed to get a job immediately. So uh, so I got right into selling cars, wanted to sell something other than a, I wanted to sell myself. And real estate gave me the opportunity to sell myself rather than sell a product. People were denying me all the time because they didn't like the car that I was that I was representing, but they weren't denying me. So I wanted to get into real estate just so if somebody had to deny something, it would be me. And I knew that I could sell myself pretty well. So so I ended up Googling uh, best real estate agents in Myrtle Beach or Myrtle Beach top company. Greg's company was the first one that came up. I went into the office, signed up on day one, quit my job immediately. And uh, <laughs> I've been rolling since then. So so first year, I did close to 40. I either did 40 or 41 transactions my first year. Um, second year, I had a couple of short sales I did with a partner, but, but overall, about 82, 82 transactions total first year, maybe high 80s. This year, on track to do about 180. So on, on track to, to really boost up the business this year, spent a lot of time cold calling a lot of time and, and just dialing the phones every day and uh, on, on pace to do about 180 this year. Very cool. Yeah, and Greg, you and I were talking about this before we went live. So effectively, there, there's, a, there's a lot there. There's a lot that's impressive about that story. Going from zero to 40 is extremely impressive. But then the, the 80 to 180, this is what do we figure out? 120% growth, something like yeah. that. I mean, this, so there's, I mean yeah. just the leaps and bounds. Incredible. Yeah. Zero to 40, that's a big deal. And then the 100% increase the next year, that's a big deal. But then to go over 100%, because typically as you do more years, the percent increase typically goes down. It's harder to, to double and double and double and double. But as you can see here, he kind of over doubled probably the, the, the second year, and now he's over doubling again. And that's very important. Now, I want to say one thing about what Kevin to, to just add to the story that he shared. You know, Kevin may have Googled best companies or whatever he Googled. And then he called and I think he talked to another person at the office. And um, and then I don't know that I called him back. I'm not sure exactly what was happening. Um, and then he may have reached out again. And then I might have just been like, ah, eh, you know, and then all of a sudden he just shows up in my damn office. Like he just shows up and like I, I had no choice but to talk to this guy. It's like, all right, I guess we're meeting. He just showed up out of the blue and he had already known that I followed Mike Ferry. He already knew that we actually make calls. And like it's just interesting to see, you know, how some of these younger guys that are coming in are actually doing their homework. They're doing their due diligence. The ones that are serious are really investigating and looking for the companies who are going to help them develop. You know, and I believe when you're a company who wants to help develop and then you've got somebody who's motivated to learn and you mix those two things together, these are the types of things that are possible, you know. So I just wanted to share that because I think that gives you a little bit of uh, uh, insight of to the way Kevin thinks, his mindset. He went out and made it happen. He didn't mm -hmm. wait for anything to happen to him or for him. He made it happen for himself. 
Yeah. Are, you, right, Harrelson, are, are you going to make yeah. that the, uh, is that now the Harrelson patented recruiting process? Is, mm. <laughs> just ignore him. You, you don't show up in my office. I'm like, eh, yeah, no, we don't need to. Yeah, I don't know if that's really the way to do it. I surely am not. That's not a new training program by any means. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but just, right. it's just good to know. <laughs> All right. So, Kevin, take us back to when you're new because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are flabbergasted by you doing 40 deals right off the bat in, in the first year. And uh, so what what was the initial experience like in the first couple months and what kind of schedule did you set for yourself? Yeah, so after I came in, I shadowed some of the top agents in the company, obviously some of the top agents in the market. And from them, 8 to 11 is what, what really got, got into my mind of you have to call from 8 to 11. And I shadowed them probably three weeks to a month. So for three weeks to a month, I was shadowing top agents, saw what they were doing, calling 8 to 11. So as soon as I got my own little station and, and I was able to make some phone calls, first thing I had to figure out was who, who do I have to call? Who do I call? So luckily, Greg already had all that, all that already situated. So got the list in front of me, started making calls, just cold calling communities, cold calling HOAs, condo buildings, and, and made, I don't know how many calls, but contact wise, I made over 80 contacts a day, probably for the first eight months. Every single day on Saturdays, on Sundays, I was calling until 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Obviously, I didn't have any appointments when I first started in the business. So, I mean, I was I was prospecting probably like 8 to 8, to eight with like a 30-minute lunch break. So, something that, that might be a little important to know is that when I graduated college, I got my girlfriend, now my wife, um, she was pregnant. So, I had a child on the way. So, I knew that I had to take on the role of now being financially responsible for, for a child. So I had that switch get, get turned in me as well of now it's time for me to start grinding and uh, get out of my college life. So, I mean, as soon as I got my job, um, as soon as I got in with Greg, I mean, that's all I was doing is just grinding. I was on the phones constantly. So I've been doing that ever since. I mean, that's, that's really the only way that I get any business now still, other than repeat and referral business, I'm making outbound phone calls. So, I mean, I, I don't get any, any business from anything else other than me making outbound phone calls. Hmm. So, Greg, let's talk for a second about why that is a more profitable and more sustainable business, even through, let's say, the coming downturn. So, yeah. So, okay. So, so there's a lot of people out there that'll be listening and 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 uh, and say, "Gosh, you know, well, I know somebody that went from zero to fifty their first year. Well, I I know somebody that went went from fifty to a hundred and fifty in their second and third year. And then when we start to listen, like a lot of the podcasts that are out there right now, you see a lot of these great stories. And when you listen, and I'm not knocking them, it's a it's different, okay. But when you listen, you see, okay, well, they've got a thirty thousand dollar ad budget on Zillow, a twenty thousand thousand dollar billboard budget they have this budget say so they really go in with their money and they're looking for a return on their money and that's perfectly fine versus what he has been doing is he's actually went grinded and, and started to manufacture create the opportunities organically without having to fund it without having to pay for it basically he says he started out making 80 contacts he doesn't have to make that many contacts right now but he's still prospecting like crazy but the thing is is he controls how many contacts he makes the, the challenge is is that so in other words it's very predictable and it's very duplicatable when he knows I do 80 contacts or 50 contacts and I'm going to get three appointments and out of those three appointments I'm going to get two and a half listings and out of those two and a half listings I'm going to have to do one price reduction but then out of those two and a half listings 1.95 of them are going to sell then he knows that x amount of contacts equals 191.95 uh, sales which equals x amount of dollars so then he divides that and finds out how much is he's worth per contact. See, this is a very du duplicatable and predictable business. The challenge is, is you don't know when it comes to, say, Zillow, Realtor.com, or any of the paid avenues uh, of lead, lead channels, you, it's hard to predict what the lead flow is going to be. It's hard to predict any of that information. So what happens when the market goes down? When the market starts to go down, what do you do? And when the lead flow goes down, you have to throw more money at Zillow in order to boost the lead flow up. But when you're actually making outbound calls, you don't have to throw more money to boost your contacts up. You have to put in a little bit more time. 
And so in the end, the challenge is, is when the market drops, most people don't have the cash flow. The cash flow typically drops. So if you're an advertising paid lead um, uh, strategy, when the market drops, your cash flow drops and you have less money to invest in the lead flow. So therefore you actually decrease the amount of money you're spending on your leads and the lead flow drops and you have no way to create it yourself. So, you know, what's interesting is when the wind's at our back and the, from a marketplace, you can get away with all this. What Kevin's done is said, I'm going to resist all those temptations. I'm going to learn it the right way. Obviously, he's learning it a way that's very profitable today. But more importantly, it's very sustainable in whenever that next shift is. And when other people are going to drop their, their ad budgets, start doing less deals, it's going to take them two years to actually understand and really master the conversations to be able to now go in and, and self-generate. Well, by that time, you've missed a couple years of, of, of significant revenue. So this is the importance of this conversation. Again, it's not a right or a wrong, but if I was going to say what are the benefits of somebody learning it the way Kevin has learned it, it's going to be he now has – options and he is not going to be anybody that's going to be a victim of the market as a matter of fact my prediction will be his best years ever will be when the market starts to turn it's interesting kevin do you agree with that yeah I've, i mean i've never gone through a downturn so i mean just <laughs> just speaking candidly i have no idea but yeah. i know that i'm going to call I, I can guarantee you if there's less competition that's the time when people are going out of business and people are actually going to start listening to the real professionals because they're they're going to think that it takes somebody with skill to be able to sell their property instead of it just going on the market and and getting sold no matter who the agent is then yeah i think that i'll i'll do extremely well yeah yeah that does make sense because that's an interesting dynamic right now that that is an objection i'm sure you have to fight on the phones and and overcome the idea that uh well you know anything you just throw it up there and anything selling you will not have to have any skill or talent to do it yeah i so mean what, that shifts, yeah. yeah go ahead go ahead kevin i'm sorry to talk yeah no you. i was saying when when that shifts i think the people that do have skills and back in 2009 2010 some of the agents that i've met nationally who have done extremely well that's what they were saying as well the agents who have skills are really going to prevail when the time comes where it shifts and people really need to go to an expert the people who, who've been behind the market and know the conversations and, and be able to provide a good service are going to are going to definitely step in and, and win the game yeah so so cool. skill, skills is less desired in a hot market right. because because the market will take care will sell the property anyhow it's in the consumer's mind so the consumer's okay with little johnny cousin uh, nephew actually listing the property because they really don't care about what little johnny knows they just need it in the mls in their minds and it's going to sell they don't they don't associate well well you, if you, we all agree that it's going to sell if you just put it in the mls but little johnny might be able to get you 500,000 and kevin might be able to get you 550,000 so we're not saying that um, little johnny can't sell it it's just a matter of whether or not little johnny can actually maximize your return but nobody thinks about that today but now guess what? When they're starting to lose money and the market's declining, they're not going to trust little Johnny to actually list their property. They're going to go to somebody that's got a proven track record and knows how to get stuff done. So I think that's what we're really referring to. Very cool. And so, Kevin, when you uh, when you started out, <clears throat> I'm assuming you had kind of a foundation of, let's say, expireds for sale by owners, and then you're doing a lot of circle prospecting. So uh, with you calling effectively, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, it sounds like you were pretty much making just about every type of call imaginable, right? So when I first started, Greg wouldn't let me call expireds. He wouldn't oh. let me call it withdrawals. So, really? so that was something where you needed to have some skills if you were gonna if you were gonna step into that ball game. So okay. when I first started, no, I'd say for the first three to four months, I was just cold calling communities. That was it. And I, I pro and this is so funny to think about, but I would go home at night at like seven seven thirty, and I would jump on Craigslist and these other sites and look up for sell by owners. And I would call them at home just because <laughs> I wasn't doing it in the office, so I was doing it at home. I was calling them for sell by owners when I got home. But no, I, it was three to four months before I. I started calling the expireds and the withdrawals in the office. And then when I first started, he only let me call them after 10 o'clock in the morning after they've already been hit a time or two. So then it's just, and now it's just getting my skills on up to be able to call at eight when it came in the morning, but it all worked out. I mean, I think it helped me better my skills. I got to hear a lot of other people on the phone with the expireds and the withdrawals. And I think it was, it was all part of the process. Yeah. Hmm. 
Interesting. So Greg, Matt, what's, so Matt, what's the so, inside story on that? Well, it's – um, you know, remember Danielson and Miyagi? Mr. Miyagi? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wax on, wax off, paint on, paint off. Okay. I can I can tell you right now, there is a process to mastering the dialogue. And it's not because now so Kevin, obviously Kevin is a great salesperson. I think a lot of people will be able to just sense that just by hearing him talk and the energy that he has. But the key is is you take a great salesperson and you don't make them or force them to follow the process, someday in the future, it's gonna show up that they don't they didn't learn something they didn't understand something it's kind of like there was a study my dad always showed me or told me about and i think it was stanford or, or harvard about how many of the death row inmates actually skipped the process of crawling they went from being for skipping the process of crawling and going straight to walking it's amazing. They did a study on death row inmates, and they went from like sitting and rolling around to kind of like jump, like like skipping the process of crawling and getting to walking. And here's what they they determined: that there's each level that you're when you're sitting, you're seeing the world from one 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 view. When you're actually on your knees doing this, you're seeing it from a different view. When you start to stand up. Or, or start crawling, you see it from a different view. When you stand up, you see it from a different view, and then you start running. And they're saying that somehow when the when the kids, toddlers or babies, were they were missing that one view, that one perspective, that it actually had an impact on the way that they thought, their thinking, their mindsets and whatnot, and it showed up in that in that area. And 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 I always remembered that. So you take somebody like Kevin, it's like, yeah, surely, could he have called expires day one? Absolutely. But he would have been practicing on the expireds. He may have gotten beat up. He may have actually something worse may have happened. He may have used a bad habit and he may have lucked out and got business and then thought that that bad habit was the new way of doing things. And then it would have market shifts and figure out that that's not the right way to do things. And that foundation is going to break down later on. So mm -hmm. it was all about teaching him the right way having patience. We're going to get there. Let's make sure we learn everything, see it from every perspective. And then when you're ready, you can start running. And that's the thought behind it is we don't want to skip the process. Go through the process. If you want to, if you want to um, have big, uh, uh, really nice trajectory and do big volume, skip the process and you're going to be a roll. It's it, to me, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. You're going to have great years, down years, great years, down years, and never, never really understand how to control your business. That's, that's how I see it. Interesting. All right, so Kevin, let's talk about um, kind of some of the shifts or transitions that you've experienced as you've, you know, effectively doubled your business twice uh, in the, over the last couple of years. So has anything changed in terms of your daily schedule, the types of people that you're calling, um, you know, where you allocate your time throughout the day and that, those sorts of things as that's changed and grown? Yeah, so now obviously I'm calling expireds and withdrawns pretty heavy. I'm calling old expireds very heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm calling for sell by owners pretty hard. I'm not doing as much cold calling as I used to. I built up a, a pretty decent sized database on on the back end. So uh, so the good news there is, is, I mean, we're still in contact with the database, but I'm doing a lot more expired, old expired call. I have a lot of follow-up. So thankfully I made a lot of, lot of good contacts in the first year and a half, two years, that now they're all coming back on the follow-up. So really, I would say that not much is called much has changed in the way that I generate. I still generate eight to eleven every day. I still generate four to six, four to seven every day. I'm on the phones doing doing all my calls. So that's not changing. It's just all the people I've talked to over the years. It's starting to come around. And one thing that Greg said when I started was was ninety five percent of your business is going to come through follow up. It's not going to come on the initial call. It's not going to come on that. It's all about how good you follow up. And, and really, I think that I have a really good follow up schedule. I mean, somebody tells me to call them in a year, I'm calling them in, in a month and a half. And I mean, then I'm going to call them in another month and a half. And I call them in another month and a half. So, I mean, it's something where I take it and they always say cut it in half. And I was like, well, what would happen if I cut it in like a fourth or a fifth? So now I'm just following up. I'm just touching them more, just trying to take up more of their, Greg likes to say, mind share. So I'm just trying to take up more and more mind share in their mind. And, and that just keeps revolving back around. Around. So really on this end, I'm really not calling too many things differently in the past year. It's just I've made so many phone calls that it's all just having like an avalanche snowball effect that my follow-ups just starting to pay off, pay off, pay off. Like I have 
probably 40 follow-ups on my desk every Monday that I have to touch base with every week. Each one of those, I get one to two listings. And the other 38 just go back into follow-up maybe for another week or two weeks or a month. So it just keeps snowballing from there. Very cool. Awesome. Um, and, and what's uh, as far as like your your support and kind of the, the systems that are around you that allow you to yeah. really focus heavily on sellers? Because one of the things we talked about, I don't think we've mentioned it live yet, is that you never did work with buyers. It was always exclusively yeah. sellers, right? Yeah, I never worked with buyers. Um, but now I'm uh, starting the process of trying to find a buyer's agent. And, and now I'm mm -hmm. having to learn all the buyer scripts and the buyer script book and how to build a duplicatable business on the buyer side. And I'm focusing on the time to commit to learning that process so I can so I can definitely have a buyer's agent who can do the same thing. Because I think that side's very scalable as well if you just play the game to win on that end. So, yeah, I never, never did anything on the buyer side. I do have two admin assistants right now who are taking care of the day-to-day. The -day. They're pulling files for me. They're setting up my negotiations negotiations, setting up my reductions for me for the day just so I can go in and knock them out. They're responding to emails. They're answering agents' questions. So they're just doing the standard stuff on the admin side. And I have a courier who is um, – I have a courier who's taking off signs and log boxes and, uh, and doing the rest of that. Yeah. And what's what's your time slot like? When, how often are you keeping your sellers in the loop and getting those price reductions and things like that? So every 10, and I just redid this. So, um, so every 10 days, every 10 business days, they're having some communication with somebody from my staff. If they're not having any showings, any, any feedback at all. Now, if they're having showings and feedback, then they're not getting any other communication other than that. Every 21 days, they're getting a reduction call from me and they're getting a very scripted reduction call of here's the actives. Here's the solds. Here's how long we've been on the market. Um, here's where our market feedback has looked like. Here's what we look like on Zillow, realtor.com, Trulia. Here's what sold. Um, here's kind of how big their house was compared to yours. And here's what we need to do to make the change. So are we good moving forward and then just making the change and, and getting it back out there. Interesting. Very cool. All right. So two admin staff, Greg, anything you want to follow up on, on the questions just about the systems that they, he's kind of built out around himself? Yeah, so what I'm really holding uh, Kevin accountable for, and I think mm -hmm. you're you're seeing it with 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 how he's explaining things, is what I'm holding him 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 strictly accountable for is or severely accountable for is making sure that he spends 80% of his time stay in the generation lane, and only 20% of the time in the servicing lane. So in order to do that, you've got to you've got to look at all the things and all the tasks that have to um, occur in order to run a business and enlist it in income generation activity, income servicing activity, and making sure that when he looks at what he's responsible for, that 80 percent of it is generation and only can be responsible for 20 percent. So notice how if you listen carefully, he said that he has staff preparing him for negotiations, staff preparing him for reductions. What that really looks like in the real world is an offer comes in. He doesn't get it. His staff gets it. They actually dissect that offer. They put all the details in that offer into a spreadsheet, and they hand him one sheet that he can look at, and it has every, it has the earnest money, it has the closing date, the stipulations, the contingencies, you know, all the, the variables that would be in a contract are on this one sheet that he's got, the, maybe net sheets are already filled out, so he doesn't have to go do that. Will he negotiate the deal? Yes, he's going to negotiate the deal, but what he's not going to do is all the prep time prior to the negotiation. So those are the types of things that Kevin's had to develop in order to stay in the 80 percent generation 20 percent um, you know servicing I, I actually think prep time for a negotiation prep time for a follow-up call with an active seller is a servicing task that's not a generation task but the actual physical conversation of, of negotiating can be a generation task so just to kind of pick up on some of the things that maybe most people won't really notice in his conversation that was a detail that was very very important that gives him a lot more time to continue you to focus in on building his business versus servicing it. Very cool. I love it. All right, Kevin, let's close out with uh, with this question for you. So as you've gone from, let's say, doing you know 80 to 180 deals, and uh, you explained kind of what your motivation was when you initially got into the business, you had a, you know, a child on the way and all that good stuff. So what what keeps you going on a daily basis now, and has that motivation changed or evolved over time? I think it has. Now it's built up to just obtain financial freedom at some point. So, I mean, being being 
not not really debt free, but because I think some debt's good debt, but uh, but being financially free. So I mean, there's there's a lot of opportunity out there. I mean, every time I turn my head, I found another way that I can do business that that brings more opportunity. Another way I can make phone calls. Another another kind of thing I can add. Not, not like a shiny object type thing, but a new pillar I can call. Like calling the rent those, calling people who who just rent out their property that aren't even looking to sell. Those people have an opening, and I need to call those. Maybe I'm not calling those hard enough. So for me, I I, I have not hit complacency at all not even gotten close to it because i feel like you need so much uh so much incoming money to, to be able to, to live a good life nowadays so, i mean for me i just want to provide a lot of uh financial stability to my family and i feel like i'm nowhere nowhere even close to that so i mean i just i just want to keep doing that and, and keep grinding it out until something else happens all right. So let Very me cool. ask you this, Kevin. Let me ask you this. So we'll just go on record. So yeah. how many how many deals do you think that uh, – what is your goal going to be for 2018? I said 300. Okay. I said 300 was going to be the goal. So so I think that – yeah, I'm confident I can do 300 next year. Okay. So what is – let, let's just explore this in, in front of the audience. What What do you think that you need to change or add? Um, in order to um, – to, what adjustments do you have to make to go from that 180 to 300 in your mind? What are you thinking? I need to have a more structured schedule, and I think one of the one of the things I always keep pounding my mind is, is be detached, and, and I think that I can still be more detached from every deal. Just give the honest truth no matter the outcome and, and keep moving forward with it. So for me, I think it's having a structured schedule, so I'm just generating. Yeah. So assuming that you have a structured schedule, um, what would what what are you doing? Is there anything you just said you're just generating? So uh, explain a little bit more. Like explain what a structured schedule means to you, or, yeah, so, or why that so why no, that's going to make the difference. Yeah, because I mean it's less. It's just optimizing. You know, I'm I'm just trying to just trying to tune out the office conversations for 15 minutes in the middle of the day, or playing on my phone for 10 minutes a day. It's it's tuning all that out and generating maybe another eight to 12, eight to 12 doing all my lead follow up and having reductions in my schedule for every Tuesday from three o'clock to four o'clock. I'm doing reductions, and then every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm doing four to seven follow-up calls, but just more detailed than that. So all my follow-ups already pulled, my, my old expires already pulled. So so one thing that I do, and I didn't even talk about it, is I'm getting into the office at 6.30 every morning, and I'm pulling all my expires, all my withdrawals for the day. I'm preparing all my call lists. So even taking that time out and, and hiring somebody to do all that, which we're working on now, I think that just gives me more time to, to focus on generating instead of just worrying about those tasks. So I think all that it breaks down to is me making more phone calls, obviously adding more staff along the way when I need it, but I think it all just comes down to making more outbound calls. That's yeah, just what got, got me here. Yeah. yeah did, and how, did I hear that correctly, that, Kevin, you're pulling all of your own, so you're not even paying for the expired leads? No. I think, I, yeah, I that's one thing we hadn't paying, touched on yet. Yeah, I am paying for a, a few of the different services just to double-check my numbers. But that's it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm pulling them all myself. So yeah, Matt, say every so, service, every service gives, uh, you know, is good, but never, none of them are perfect. So he mm -hmm. wants, so he, remember he said the term optimizing. So while everybody's using one service and getting 70% of the, uh, the opportunities, he may be using two services and manual. So then he's getting 95% of all the opportunities. Gotcha. So it's all about optimization. It's all about optimization. Kevin, how big is your database right now? It's it's close to four thousand. I just okay. I just checked it. It's close to four thousand, and we we're running through it every more than every quarter. So I'm confident that all the four thousand that are in there are actually sellers who own in this market, and and you know what I mean, and, and are yeah. at some point going to sell their property. So I mean, they're they're all four thousand owners in in this market that we're staying engaged with, and uh, and I mean they're they're really following our posts. We have a, we have a good click ratio on who's opening things. Yeah. So Matt, what the importance for the audience is this: is that I made sure that Kevin on day one was building his his database, collecting emails while he was making all those calls. Those emails were really didn't have any value first year. They had a little bit of value in second year. I'm assuming you got some come list me calls from your database. You know, um, the second year you probably got more this particular year, which is your third year. But now this thing's going to mature. So he's been building it, building it, building it, building it. Watch what happens in the fourth year, a big part of Kevin's momentum will be that his database is going to mature and there'll be a higher volume that comes back to him as come list me calls while
he continues to optimize his own lead generation strategies. So he's improving and increasing his um, in the area of lead um, his lead generation. At the same token, he's got this database that's been working. Working, he's been working it for the last three years. In the fourth year, watch how that database is going to spit out deals. And now he'll get more deals because of his efforts and more deals because of the efforts of his database. You collect those, combine those two, that's how we get to 300 transactions. Gotcha. Yeah, makes sense. There's the answer. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so, uh, so, Greg. Uh, let's close out uh, with this. So let's say someone wants to follow in Kevin's footsteps. So they're they're getting into the business or they've been in the business for a little bit. You uh, Would you give them kind of the same advice that you gave Kevin in terms of the same restrictions? Go out, call the neighborhoods first, develop your skills before you jump on something like expireds and FISBOs? Um, gosh, the answer is going to be maybe. And I'll say why, because, you know, I'm going to, um, I, I don't believe there's a, a one size fits all. There's not a perfect structure that everybody just fits in. You know, so Matt, if you were to um, come to me and say what you just said, we would sit down. I would probably get to know you a little bit more. I'd understand where you're comfortable, where you're not comfortable. I probably wouldn't try to get you to do something that you're extremely uncomfortable doing, but I also wouldn't want you to stay in the comfortable box either. So I have to learn that about you. And then I would sit down and take all my past experiences from coaching a variety of different type of agents. And I would say, okay, let's pull from this experience, pull from that experience, and we'd customize a program for you that's that's the real answer gotcha okay yeah and so you really have to look at let's if somebody's going through that journey alone obviously the best the best thing to do would be to have a coach like that that, that can help them with that but if they're going through that alone yeah. you have to really look at pushing and getting into your stretch zone without getting into your stress zone yeah that's a good way to put it. And I and, and if I was going to answer, I guess, and maybe your intent was for me to answer it in a more generalized way. Um, if I could just say, you know, out of, you know, just one statement for that would I would almost say applies to just about everybody. Yes. Do what he just did. You you basically make a ton of contacts on the front end because. That's how you're going to learn, not because I thought that having him cold call in the beginning was going to bring him all this business. I knew that that was going to bring him a lot of reps and through repetitious, you know, the repetition of having these conversations, he was going to get better and better. His skills were going to improve. And then once his skills got to a certain level, then just let him loose. But let's make sure we keep him in that zone, in that learning zone for a while. Learn, 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 learn. Hold back. Hold back. He's like a thoroughbred that we have to hold back and say, no, you can't go yet. You can't go yet. And then as soon as it's time, we're going to let you out the gate and you run. That's what that's what we're doing. So I would say, yes, for a lot of people, they need that. This would be the exact way to do it. Very cool. All right, Kevin, we've got the uh, and you've got the strategy to get to uh, to 300. How do you feel about that? I'm ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> Going back on, right. on the phone as soon as we finish this and, and making more calls. All right, guys. So, uh, so Kevin, if somebody wants to send uh, you and your team a referral there in your area, remind them of uh, the areas that you that you serve, and uh, again, how to reach out to you. Yeah, it's uh, Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach, Surfside Beach, Conway. We just cover this entire Horry County area. And uh, my email is Kevin Mills Team at Gmail dot com. Send them to me, not Greg. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, Greg, how do people reach out to you? Hey, if anybody, you know, what I'm what I'm looking for is I'm looking for more people that are, um, you know, about serious about getting into real estate and, and building a career. And kind of like Kevin, you know, he's uh, his focus in the beginning was to, um, you know, immediately put himself in position to provide and, uh, you know, a stability for his young family. And now he's in the position of thinking about the future and providing stability all the way beyond, um, you know, the, the next 20 years, all the way into retirement. So, you know, I'm constantly looking for people that that want to learn this business that I can help, you know, develop the, that, that talent in either Charleston, South Carolina or Myrtle Beach. So, you know, reach out to me at uh, Greg Harrelson at gmail.com like always, and um, I'll answer your questions. But also if you know anybody saying about getting in the business or anybody that wants to, to have a quantum leap in their business, I'd love to talk with you. Excellent. 
And then for the show itself, guys, if you want to subscribe to the audio version, make sure to go to iTunes or Stitcher, depending on your device. And then for the video version, go to YouTube. Uh, if you go to the uh, the website for the show and subscribe there by email, it's leveluppodcast.com. Click on the free. Uh, that's at the very top. And you can go there and get a free training video. So Kevin alluded to kind of his systems that's nurturing that database of 4,000 people. We've got a whole training video that Greg and I put together on how to dip your toe into those waters, how to get started in that area. So go to the leveluppodcast.com slash free, or just go to the website and click on the free icon, pop in your email, you'll get instant access to that video and know exactly how to get started down that road. So that if you're making the contacts, you're putting the repetition in, that you have a way to nurture those people. Because like you said, Greg, it's nothing's going to happen unless you put in the follow-up and a, and a great follow-up program is a good part of that. It will supplement the calls that you're making. So Kevin, you're reaching out and you're hitting everybody in your database quarterly, but in between there, they're getting this whole string of email communication from you that's all run inside of uh, Infusionsoft in that case. And so guys, if you want to step into that world, uh, make sure to get that training video. So with that being said, we'll put a nice little bow on this one. We appreciate everybody joining us. Kevin, thanks for joining us and sharing your story. Good luck. We know as soon as we get off the, uh, the, the line here, you'll be hitting the phones. We'll be. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see everybody on the next one.